Road. And I want to present her with this Holy Ghost certificate, if you would. She received the baptism of the Holy Ghost spoke in tongues. Amen. Amen. Glory, God bless you. Welcome. Amen. How we love Gloria. Today we have a special occasion today, which is the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Are you thankful for that? Yes. And, you, and I also want to thank God for the birth of my wife. My wife is a Christmas baby. She yes. was born December 23rd, and the church has a special presentation just for her and we want to thank God for what the Lord is doing for her in Jesus name. Put me in the hospital in a 
stocking in a Santa, red Santa stocking. <laughs> and God is good. Woo, thank you for the presidents here. Yes, very nice presidents, right? As my husband would say. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, I'm going to read this when I get home. And thank you so much for your generosity. Um, bless you. Bless you richly. And these are very beautiful, very beautiful cards. Wow, very nice. I will read this song. Thank you. I love you, and God, God bless you, everyone. And from the bottom of my heart, you're precious to me, too. Amen. Thank you so much. to let God know that we're completely dependent on him. Because the more we give, the more we give in treasures in heaven, the more we'll receive back through our faith to the Lord, our faith to his provision, our faith of him taking care of us, we give unto the Lord. So saints, we're going to pray for you. And we're going to have Bob Dylan come out. We've got Brother Paul with the electronics. If you got a debit card, Make your checks out to STLH. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you. We love you, Lord. We love you in our hearts. We pray for your provision of this house. We pray for your provision of our house at home, oh Lord Jesus. We pray for your love and understanding, Lord. We pray that you provide for us when we go out of this house, oh Lord Jesus. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your blood, oh Lord. We pray for your righteousness covering us. We pray that your blood covers our house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
The Bible says in Isaiah 96 that the Lord was born as prophesied. And he is not only a son, but he is also a father.
name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord.
but you could also get a miracle that is called receiving the Holy Ghost and enter into the kingdom of God. And you could be healed and you could be born of the water and the spirit. That's what matters to me. I'd rather be saved than to have a physical miracle because a physical miracle, it can heal me. But there's a greater miracle than that and that's called receiving the Holy Ghost. That's called being saved because you can't go into the, you can't go into the kingdom of heaven and not be born of the water and the spirit and receive the Holy Ghost. It's in the word. Just go read it. It's one of the greatest miracles because you could be healed physically and not be saved, but you could be born of the water and of the spirit and be saved. There's people in this very room that God has placed on my heart that God really wants to move in your life, that God really wants to do something in your life. And you know who you are. And the reason why I felt very nervous about this, using the gift that's inside of you. I don't know who you are today. God knows who you are today. But I'm here from a mandate from heaven to tell you to use the gift that's inside of you. Maybe God's calling you to the ministry and God wants you to do something to get into your higher purpose. But I'm here to tell you to do it because God is reaching out to somebody in this room. Somebody in this very room right now. I think I know who it is. But God, I pray, Lord, that you would touch them in the name of Jesus. This is not your average service. This is not your average service. You're so hungry for God, you're boiling inside. I was praying earlier this week, and I don't know why, but he just said, somebody in this room is boiling inside. You're ready to do something, and it's just about to explode, but you don't know how to do it. But I'm here to tell you, when you go down in this altar right here, you're going to feel it, and God is going to tell you in the name of Jesus. And you can leave here with a gift you've received. But if you never open that gift up to see what's inside and to actually use it, it's receiving, but not using. God told me about this analogy. You can receive a gift and you could be all satisfied with the wrapping paper and the ribbons and makes it all look nice. But until you open that gift, you will never know what's inside. Until you open it, you'll never see what God has given you. And some of you in this room, you want to do things for God, but you're saying to yourself, I don't know if I can do it. I'm scared to see what will happen in the future. But I'm here to tell you, use the gift that's inside of you. Use what God has given you, because it will be worth it in the end. I don't know what God has given you as a ministry, God has called you to sing. Maybe God has called you to preach. But I'm here to tell you, you need to do it and do it in the name of Jesus. You need to do it now. Somebody get out of the God right now. Somebody get excited in the name of Jesus. I feel like preaching. Some of you may be tired right now, but I'm here to tell you, let's get excited. Let's celebrate, for this is a time of celebration. This is the birth of Jesus Christ, and this is a day. It is a new day that the Lord has made. Some of you may be crossing your arms and say, Dylan, that doesn't seem like a good Christmas message. Well, I'd rather have something that is from God than to have something that makes you feel good about yourself and gets you up. But I'm here to preach to you something that is from God. It's not by a program. I didn't find this online. I didn't ask Pastor for one of his messages. No, this is from God. And I'm here to tell you that God is reaching for somebody today. You need to receive it. You need to receive it. I'm not trying to offend anybody in this room. I am totally not. That is not my intention have to use what God has given you. If God has given you a, a Bible, a word to study, a Bible group, you need to start that right now. So many people have complained saying this. I'm called to the ministry. I'm called to this. I'm called to that. But the question is, have you fulfilled the call yet? Have you used what God has given you? Some of you, maybe God has given you something, a gift, but you can never access that gift if you never opened it up and see what's inside. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So many people have complained that they need this and they need that and they're, stuck. they're satisfied with themselves. But I'm here to tell you, there's somebody in this room that's not satisfied to be the same. And you need to unlock it. You need to open that
grow dormant in your life. Use the gifts that God has given you. Some people, what they will do is they will delay until so they can live their lives how they want to live instead of how God wants to see their lives come out. And what they will do, they say, God has given me this, so I'm always going to have it. I can unlock it whenever I want. But the thing is, if you don't use what God has given you, he'll give it to somebody else who will use it. If you have a call to be in the ministry and you think that you can just have everything and live comfortably and not do a single thing, you're wrong. Because guess what? God can raise a drug addict, drug addict across the street from you who's going to actually do what God told you to do. And guess what? You're going to regret it. But I'm here to tell you, use the gift that's inside of you. Use what God has given you. Use it. So some of you need to wake up in this moment. Be calm.
where God was taking me. I thought he wanted to minister to people to get them to receive the Holy Ghost. But God is dealing with somebody right now. And he wants you to consider this message. He's giving you a chance. I said this in the Philippines. There was a powerful move of God. And the service, the preaching didn't even go on. It was just people crying in the altar. People fell out. People were slain in the spirit. But the thing that happened, the people that were on the outside... That just sat there crossing their arms. God told me to tell them, I'm giving you a second chance. Because this moment may never happen again if you don't get a hold of it. This moment may never happen again if you don't get a hold of it. I don't know about you, but for some reason, every time we miss the ball, we always regret it after the fact. And I don't want to regret it after the fact. I want to do what God has told me to do. I don't want to be timid. I may gamble it all. I may lose it all just to multiply that one talent. But when it becomes two, God says, Thou tongue, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the kingdom of God. You may have risked it all. You may have multiplied it and took a step of faith and said, I don't know about this, but God told me to do it. I'm going to do it. May be one talent, but if you make that two, if you make that four, if you make that ten, if you make that twenty, God will be pleased with it. You need to use the gift that's inside of you. Thank you, Lord. You can be satisfied with the present that's all nicely wrapped in the ribbons, and it just looks so nice. And you could say for a fact, well, I got a good present. I got a good ministry. But it looks so nice in this wrapping. It looks so nice in all the ribbons and all the decorations. But until you open it up, you'll never see what it is. You'll never unlock it and begin to be able to use it. Right. When's the last time, Brother Jim, you know this, you work on cars. Have you ever not opened a toolbox? and never use the tools. You see, if you open a toolbox, you get the tools that are inside of it to use it. But if you never open it in the first place, then you're not gonna be able to use it. You have to use what God has given you. You have to use the gifts that are inside of you. God has given us spiritual tools, but if you never use them to get the work that God has done for you, you're not gonna be able to do anything. Right. You're not gonna be able to multiply. Right. You know what that's like? That's someone praying a prophecy over you and saying, oh, I'm called to the ministry. I'm called. Yes, you are called, but will you fulfill? You may be called, but will you fulfill? God maybe has placed a talent in you to sing, but will you ever take a step out of faith and on this podium and say, God, I give my praise all to you. I'm singing for your glory only, not the world's. Right. Right. Man. Now that I think about this, if God has given you something that's very valuable, you ought to use it. You ought to use it because that is a gift from the Most High. You need to understand it is a gift from God, the living God, the most powerful God. There is no other name by which we must be saved. That gift is from God. Yes. And what I see, it's like an inheritance. It's like you receive a responsibility. We had a Bible club at our school, right, Mrs. Harry? And I felt God say to me, I was just praying, and I was crying, because I said, God, I want to do something in this school. I want to see people saved. And I felt him say, it is your responsibility to see them saved. It is your responsibility to guide them to the life of Christ. It is your responsibility. And I begin to read the passages that said, and when Jesus was preaching in the New Testament, he said, I've never lost one soul that you've given me, Father. And I begin to say, God, I don't want to lose the soul that you've given me. I don't want to lose them. Uh, right. You've given me as them as a responsibility. But I don't want to lose them. Right. He told me, you're going to do it. You have a responsibility. And I said, God, send me and I will go. I'm going to use you have given me. God is placing a burden on somebody right now. God is placing a burden on someone. Brother Ted, I don't know what God has called you to do, but you want to do it. Brother Paul, you keep doing what you're doing. Sister Jessica, you keep doing what you're doing. Church, you keep doing what God has told you to do. the Holy 
God is touching people right now. I see that in the Holy Ghost. You got to start fulfilling. Sometimes I get scared to speak in tongues in public. So what I did to get over that fear is I was on a call with one of my friends. I just started speaking in tongues. Let's just all speak in tongues right now. Hallelujah, let's keep going. I feel that we need to do this. That's it, brother Ted. Keep on going. That's it. He's Santa Bacala Tobo Soto. Yata Yata Kata Yata 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 Thank you. 
They were all with one accord in one place, kind of like what we are this morning. We are in one place. We are united in worshiping the Lord. And suddenly, someone say suddenly. Silent. There came a sound. Someone say a sound. Silent. See, the infilling of the Holy Ghost is accompanied with a sound. Because a sound, when somebody is born, generally indicates that life has entered their body. It still is today when a baby is born in the hospital, when it cries, it means that it has started breathing on its own. There's a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it failed all the house where they were sitting. He didn't receive the Holy Ghost sitting there. Amen. It's better if it helps your faith standing up. They were sitting down. It's all right. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And read that scripture with me. What happened? As they were all filled, they began to speak with other tongues or other languages. As the Spirit of God gave them the ability to speak in the heavens. So how do you receive this? The Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit? You have to worship the Lord. And it comes out of your tongue. Amen? It comes out of your tongue. And at some point, pay attention right now. You control yourself. At some point, as you're speaking in English or Spanish or Tagalog or whatever it is, you stop pronouncing the words because you can't speak in tongues and English at the same time. See, your tongue is a muscle that you control how you pronounce words. And so you speak in tongues by letting go or stop pronouncing or stop controlling your tongue to speak the language that you know or you're familiar with. And that's when God supernaturally takes a hold of your tongue. That's when God, God's a gentle God. He's not going to force himself on you. Amen? He's not, you know, going to. You can't wait there and, well, I'm just going to wait till God gives me or forces me to speak. Yeah, I'm going to wait till God pulls my tongue. It's, that's, that doesn't happen like that. It, it will be your own voice. It will be your own tongue. But you have to allow the Spirit of God to speak through you. Would you lift up your hands one more time and would you begin to thank God in English? Would you begin to praise God in English? And at some point in thanking God. And at some point in praising God. Stop pronouncing your words. Stop pronouncing your own language. And begin to speak the language of heaven. And begin to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God. As the presence of God begins to give you the ability to speak. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you already have the Holy Ghost, would you pray for somebody that doesn't have it yet this morning? That they too might receive the gift. If you have the gift of the Holy Ghost, you already have the faith to pray for somebody to experience what you have already experienced. God will allow you. God, it is the will of God for you. It is the will of God for you to receive His Spirit this morning. It is the will of God for you to receive His Spirit right now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, 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 God. Go ahead, talk in tongues this morning. Amen. Don't pronounce your words. Keep talking, keep speaking, keep moving. 
your tongue. Keep moving your tongue. It's a muscle that you have to relinquish control over to God. God's already pouring out His Spirit. We have already at least one right now. Aida here in front has been talking in tongues for many minutes now. It can happen to you. It will happen to you. You just got to believe it. And you got to let it happen. It's been poured out right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, it is as natural for you to speak your Father's language as it is for you to speak in tongues. It should be as natural for you. Hallelujah, God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Acts chapter 2 verse 16 In Jesus name This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel And it shall come to pass in the last days Saith God I will pour out my spirit Upon all things Upon every person. Upon somebody that's alive. If we are a human being. It's been prophesied to you. That we are living in the last days. And you shall receive. As God pours out his spirit upon every person. Your sons. Your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. How many of you know the scriptures? We're familiar with John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now before you get to verse 16, you get to you read the whole chapter of John chapter 3 to give you the context of John 3.16. Does that make sense? So we all can quote it, right? John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth or keeps continuing to believe in him should not perish and have everlasting life. Make sense? Right. Now how are you going to believe? That will be a question. Right? Would that be a fair question? He said whoever believes uh, will be saved, will have everlasting life. Now remember this is verse John 3, 16. This is verse 16. So if you back up to John chapter 3, verse 3, This is the context of how you should believe and what you should be doing. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless you're born again, you cannot be saved. Amen? You can't see the kingdom. You can't see heaven. And he's talking to Nicodemus, a politician, a lawyer of his day. Verse 4, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? In verse 5, Jesus gave him a little bit more context, a little bit more detail. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I am truly, truly, I say unto thee, except be born, you might be born of water. Some say water. water. And of the Spirit, he cannot enter heaven, the kingdom. 
You know, these are not my words. This is Jesus talking to Nicodemus. These are, this is the context before you get to John 3.16 that everybody just quotes and skip over for some reason. Verse 1 to 15. So you've got to be born of water. What is that? If you read the book of Acts, it talks about water baptism. Because right. water is water. Right? right? It's, it's not symbolic of anything. And it says again, so it can't be, so some people say, well, it's the plasma of your mom when you're born, that, that's, you're born of water. Nicodemus already asked, asked that question, can I go into my mother's womb again? And, and Jesus is very kind. He didn't say, you're so dumb, Nicodemus, right? right. You're so gentle. He said, you got to be born of water, that's water baptism. And you got to be born of the Spirit. That's when the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit comes inside your body and you speak in tongues. Seven. Seven. Verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. So if you're born naturally into this world, which all of us were, right? We won't be here. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not or don't be surprised that I am saying to you, you must. Be born again. Right. This is not a suggestion. This is this is not something that the Lord is saying lightly. It's, he said, "You got, you have to, you must be born again to enter into the kingdom." Verse eight. He says, "The wind blows where it wants to, or listen, and you hear the sound thereof, but you can't tell when, where it's going, where it's coming, where it's going, because the wind is." Invisible, right. right? Have you ever seen the wind? Have you ever, ever seen the wind? Oh yeah, I've seen the wind. I've seen the effects of the wind, but I can't see the wind because it's invisible. He said the only reason that you will know that somebody is born of the spirit is because there's a sound right. associated with it. Right. Says so, so is everyone that is born of the spirit. Everyone that's born of the Spirit, there is a sound associated with their experience. Amen. And so in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Now again, this is verse 38. And so you've got to read verse 1 through 37 to get the context. And the context is this for the sake of time. Peter preached to them that they were all guilty. Of crucifying Jesus Christ. Did you know you are guilty? Right. I am guilty of crucifying Jesus Christ. Now wait a minute, I was not there. I'm not a Jew by birth. Maybe I'll maybe I'll maybe if I was there, I would not cry out crucify him. Really? Anybody think like that? Really? Maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't. I don't know. But I do know this, that all of us need to be saved. Right. And we can't save ourselves. Right. And so after so many words, Peter began to preach to them and convicted them basically that they are guilty of the blood. And actually in verse 37, they began to ask, Lord, uh, uh, men and brethren, what shall we do in, in response that we are guilty? Then this is the response that Peter said unto them, repent. Would you do that right now? Would you repent all over the building? What does that mean? You ask God for forgiveness of your sins. If any man say that he has no sin, he lies. And the truth is not in him. All of us are born in sin and shape and iniquity. All of us struggle with sin from time to time. But there is no condemnation right now. There is conviction. And there's a difference. And if you confess your sins, He is just. He is faithful to forgive you of all of your sins. And to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. you got to confess your sin. Would you do that right now? Father, forgive me for everything that I have said that I should not have said. Lord, forgive me of my immoral thoughts. Come on, somebody. Forgive me of my immoral thoughts, God. Forgive me, Lord, of the things that I have done 
and should not have done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, if you confess your sins, the Bible says that he forgives you. Would you thank him right now for forgiving you? It is really that simple. When you confess, he forgives you. If you want to cry, that's all right. That's a bonus. It cleanses your soul, but that's not a requirement. You just got to be sincere. God, I messed up. Don't say, yeah, God, forgive me. I messed up because... My brother here did this. Now don't justify yourself. No. Hello? Yeah. Some just can't help. You know, well, I, I would not do that if they... Can. Come on now. All right. Hello? Right. I think we ought to repent one more time with that. Would you just do that right now? He applies a lot of people. God, I'm not going to justify myself. I'm going to stand before you, Lord, not needing to justify myself, but needing your mercy and needing your grace. And I know some of you have gone through a lot of things. Uh, and would you forgive people right now in the name of Jesus Christ? Would you forgive them right now? It doesn't mean uh, that what they've done is all right. It doesn't mean you're putting a stamp of approval of what they said uh, or what they did to you. No. Uh, it is not that, but when you forgive, it releases yourself. It releases your soul. Come on, somebody, you can do it. You can forgive, just as you and I need forgiveness. The Lord says, I can forgive you if you yourself can forgive somebody else. Lord, I forgive them. I forgive them, oh God, that I might be free from what they've done for me to me. That I might be free from what they said about me. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I notice Peter didn't stop at just repentance. And he said, and be baptized. Some of you. Only if you want it. Only if it's convenient. Only if it lines up with your philosophy. Or, you know, you, you, you're, you're ready. Oh, I'm not ready. You know, it, it's, it's interesting. Wow. Doing this for many years now. People say, well, I'm not ready. For what? You're not ready to be forgiven? Uh, you're not ready for your sins to be remitted? Right. It, it's like the bank calling you. Hey, the mortgage you owe. Uh, you don't owe it anymore. So, no, I'm not, I'm not ready. <laughs> you, you see how absurd that that would be, and, and, and even more so when you apply it to spiritually. Right. No, you are ready. I'm born ready. Yes. Somebody say that with me. I'm born ready. You are born ready to be reborn. Yes. To be rebaptized. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Now, uh, I might step on your toes, so if you I don't want to stop, don't step on you. You want to curl your feet a little bit. Tuck your feet in a little bit. Because I'm just going to read scripture to you. And this goes against 99% of all Christianity. And it says, And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. No. Not here, son. Is that what it says? No. Is that what Peter said? No. Is this in the name of what? Jesus. Well, what about Matthew 28, 19? What about it? His father in the name? No. Nope. Title. Are there fathers here? Any other fathers? Can I? Your father, you want to? I know some of you don't want to claim your father. You are. No. <laughs> Let me ask you this. When somebody asks your name, do you say, oh, my name is Father? You got a name, right? right? The father has a name. Right. Anybody his son? All the male? Your son? You have a name? Amen. And the Holy Spirit also has a name. You know what the name is? Peter gave it to us. It's Jesus. Right. Turn with me if you would, Isaiah 9, verse 6. This is what the Lord wants for this service. I have actually another message prepared, but... 
This is not my service, this is his service. So Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now who is, who is that referring to? Is that referring to Jesus Christ? Yes. Is Jesus the Father? Yes. Yes. Oh, trick questions up there. Yes. Is he the Father? Yes. That's why Peter said, if you go back to that, Acts 2.38, said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. Because He is the Father. Right. He is the Son. He is the Holy Ghost. Right. And it's very important to be baptized in that name because there's the remission. There's the washing away. It's that mortgage company calling you. You don't owe anything anymore. Your sins have been washed. Right. Your sins have been remitted. How do you want that? Hallelujah. We have water, we have a baptismal tank in the back. If you've not been baptized in Jesus' name, you owe it to yourself to be baptized in Jesus' name. Verse 39. This is for those that say, well, that was just back then when the day of Pentecost. God's not pouring out His Spirit anymore. Well, that was for them, you know, because uh, I don't want to do it, basically. Hello? So Peter settled that question. For the promise is unto you. Someone say it's for me. It's for me. Come on, somebody say it's for me. It's for me. The promise is unto you, your children. That is the next generation. And as many, the succeeding generations, as the Lord our God shall call. Hallelujah. 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 Amen in Jesus' name. Would you thank God one more time? <laughs> Hallelujah. Would you stand with me? If you need something from the Lord this morning. You know, God is attracted to worship. Did you know that? The Bible says where two or three are gathered together in His name, there He will be in their midst. In fact, Matthew chapter 2, verse 2 speaks about that. And these were wise men that came to worship. And I believe there's a lot of smart people here in this room. God has been dealing with you. God's been calling you. Matthew chapter 2 saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east yeah. and are come to worship. Yeah. Would you lift up your hands to the Lord right now? Would you just worship Him? Would you thank Him? Would you bless His name? Hallelujah in the name of the Lord Jesus. We worship the Lord. We worship you God. I want to invite you to come to the front this morning. And if you need something from the Lord, if you need a healing touch, if you need a blessing, if you need anything that's in relation to yourself or your family, if you need direction from God, I want to invite you to come to the front and we're going to pray for you. And we're going to believe that God is going to answer your need and going to meet you at your point of need. For the Lord loves you. Hallelujah. And God has called you for such a time as this that you might experience Him. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, come. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, saying, where is He that is born King of the Jews? For we have seen His star in the east. And we have come to worship Him. Would you worship Him this morning? Would you worship Him right now? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank You for all that You've done, O oh God. Lord, we worship You in Jesus' name. Now would you begin to open up your mouth and begin
going to worship him. Your words are important to God. What you say matters to the Lord. What you worship him this morning. What you thank him out of your own voice. Out of your own mouth. Would you begin to articulate your gratefulness and your gratitude to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release now, oh God, healing in this place. I release now, oh God, your spirit in this house. Lord, I release strength and determination to follow you, to worship you. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, go ahead, speak. Go ahead, speak. 